Welcome to the second video in our quadcopter build series 4. Now we are going to be talking about this little thing for pretty much the entire video this time. This is the flight controller that we're using, the Beta Flight F3. Now the reason that we're going to spend so much time talking about this little guy is because it's an all-in-one board, there are a couple of considerations and things we need to think about before we start clipping off wires and heating up the soldering iron. And that's because this flight controller is not only the flight controller itself, but it's also the power distribution board, it also has all the on-screen display bits and pieces, it has the connections for the black box, so everything that we need, apart from the ESCs, receiver and FPV kit, along with the motors and a battery, is in one single board. Now normally we would expect that we'd have some power distribution board separate to this, we don't need that. We don't need an external minimum OSD, we don't need that. We don't need any external bits and pieces at all. But because of the limitation of this space, because this is still the same size as a normal flight controller, there are pads at the bottom, mainly for power, but there's a couple of other things as well that we'll talk about in a second. So we do need to think about that, because normally the way we'd set this up, we'd pop this in the middle of the frame, and then start putting things on the frame, and making soldered connections onto the different pins that we need. Couple of challenges, of course, is that because some of the pads are underneath, we're going to have to solder things to the flight controller before we install it into the model itself. And some of those are going to be the ESCs and also the main power back wires that go to the battery that connect back here. And then once we've got those power connections made and we've soldered a couple of other little things at the back here that we'll talk about in a second, then we should be in a position where we can actually pop it onto the model and off we go. Before we get into that, let me very quickly cover some of the specs on this board. So again, this is the Beta Flight F3 flight controller. It's a 2 to 6S capable flight controller. So there are the pads here, the ground at the bottom, and on the opposite side you have the positive pad for the main battery. So the main XT60 connector or whatever it is is going to plug straight into here. That power is then routed around this six layer flight controller. It's a six layer PCB. The only other PCB I think I've used that have been six layer has actually been the Brain FPV RE1, but I might be mistaken. But the power is coming in from the battery and then sent all out to each of the pads in each of the corners. Those pads uh, will support, I think it's about 25 amps, and support, I think it's 30 or just over 30 amps for a limited period of time. So the 30 amp speed controllers that we're using on our model with the 4S motor, the 2205, 2300 kV motors should be fine and probably about the top end of what we could probably get away with without stressing the board a little bit too much. We don't want to put too much current through here because again all of the power to the motors is going through the thin traces and the power lines that are actually hidden inside the board. And that's what that thing there is, the thing with 0M50. What that is, is a very, very small resistor. And what happens is the power comes in through the battery to one side, it goes out the other side to all of the power pads around. And what happens is as the current flows from the battery to the ESCs, it causes a little voltage drop across that big fat resistor and that's the voltage drop that the flight controller uses to monitor how much current you're pulling. It has three UARTs on board, we'll talk about where those are presented and how you could potentially use those later on. We'll see it when we actually get this board installed how it actually works in practice. There's a nice layout here, we have all of these pins at the right hand side. Because we have the signal and ground for each of the ESCs in each corner, so there's the ESC positive and negative connection for the power, and then on the top of the board you have the ground and signal for that ESC in each corner. So you've got two ESCs at the side, and then you've got these two at the front. So when you mount this board in your craft the right way round, and there's the little arrow pointing forwards. So the USB is on the side. Uh, great that they've got a little button for the boot up here, which is great. I would have been more impressed if it was over here, because again, if that is one side of the craft, this is going to be one of the others. That's still not a disaster. You could still get to that to press it, but it would have been so nice to have it over here. And the last thing, of course, is it has got an integrated on-screen display. Come on, camera. So the chips on here, the big chip in the top left-hand corner, this guy is actually the one that's doing the on-screen display. We have a video out and a video in pin on here. 
So very quickly, what I'd like to do is go through and show you how we're going to wire this thing up. And then once we have all that in our head, we can go into the next video and start putting things like ESC and power wires on here and start building the frame up. So here's the flight controller that we've just been looking at in real life. First of all, let's talk about how we're going to connect the electronic speed controllers and the motors. So we're going to connect them in each corner. And again, the power connections are going to go from the ESC to the back of the flight controller itself. And then at the front, we have the ground and signal wires for the signal going to the ESC that tells the ESC how much throttle we want. Obviously, the other side of the ESC is going to fit onto the three wires coming out of the motor. We're not going to worry too much about the order of those. When we get to that point, we can use the BL Heli software to change the direction of the motors if we've wired it up the wrong way around. So we can just crack on. So once we've figured out how to do that, we can add all four of the motors in exactly the same way. I'm probably going to mock up how the frame is in the next video just to see how long the power cables need to be. And then once I've got that figured out, I can clip them to length, then take everything off the frame, solder the ESCs to the bottom of the flight controller, also pop on the power wires for the battery as well. And then with a couple of extra little bits of blobs of solder that we'll talk about in a second, I should be able to put the flight controller into the frame and we'll be good. Next thing we need to think about then is the receiver. Now the receiver goes into one of two places on the board depending on whether or not it's a serial receiver and that's things like SBUS, IBUS, satellite receivers, those kind of receivers go into the bottom three pins and then if it's a PPM receiver then it goes into the set of pins just above. The outside pin is always ground on this board and they've kind of kept it that way which is pretty much the convention these days anyway. I'm going to be using one of the really small XM Plus receivers from FR Sky. Uh, they're really small, really lightweight. It'll give me SBUS and it should also be able to potentially give me telemetry as well with an extra little cable that I can solder up. Next thing to consider then is how we connect the FPV equipment. Because this has an on-screen display, if I was using traditional on-screen display pieces, then I'd connect it up like this. The camera, if it was a five volt camera, I'd pull the five volts and ground from one of the spare pins on this right hand side. I'd have the video in going into where it's shown on the diagram. Then the other side, I'd plug the video transmitter into there and those three cables side by side are going to be the video out then, the power, and again, we'll talk about that in a second, and the ground cable too. Now, because I'm actually going to be using the Connex HD system on this model, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to take advantage of that. But one of the things I do want to think about is whether or not I can use the Mavlink telemetry protocol, which is part of Betaflight, to get information into the on-screen display for the Connex stuff to see whether or not I can actually show some of the information, particularly about battery voltage and also current used into the on-screen display of the FPV gear. Again, I haven't actually tried this yet. You'll be learning about it as I figure it out. Other things then are on the board. Here's that top view. And going from the top right hand corner, we have that very top row of pins we've already talked about. That is all to do with the video stuff, the on-screen display, video in, video out, and the power. Then the next one down is actually the soft serial. So you can turn soft serial on and have it exposed here on the right hand side. Soft serial tends to only run at lower board speeds, 19,200, that kind of level. But if you want to put extra things on there, it's really nice that you've got that because one of the things you do run out when you try and add uh, OLEDs, GPS units, sonars, all that kind of goodness in there, you do kind of start to run out of UARTs. So being able to have a soft serial presented on pins like that is great. Next one then down is UART2. Underneath that then is the connections for the LED strip. So we have the signal, five volts and ground for that. So if we want to put individually addressable LEDs on the craft, we can very simply. The next two under that that aren't noted, of course, are the connections for SBUS and also for the PPM connector that we've just talked about. There's a little pad in the middle that's noted as RSSI. We'll play with that with the XM Plus receiver from FR Sky to see if we can get the RSSI information on on-screen display or at least appearing in the GUI. And then at the bottom, we have the two other UART. UART3, if we're continuing to go around clockwise, is in the bottom right-hand corner. UART1 is in the bottom left-hand corner. And then the other connections you've got on the top are for a buzzer.
if we flip the board over, the only other things you need to think about, obviously we've talked about the power pads for the ESCs in each of the corners, and we've talked about that great big whacking resistor at the bottom that's there to measure the current that's being pulled. The other things that you'll notice, the first is an SD card slot. The SD card slot is kind of this mini super duper slot. I might see if I can 3D print some kind of support that's going to help this board because that card slot doesn't feel like it really grabs hold of the SD card and there have been reports of the SD card popping out when you have a particularly interesting landing. By that is the 3.3 volt regulator and then that kind of brings me nicely on to the last two things on the left hand side. Underneath the board itself, if we just go back to the desk for a second, You'll notice, if I just put the board the right way around, that there are these little pads here. Let's see if it's going to... There we go. Um, the top pad is how you select the voltage for the video transmitter that comes out up here where it says RAM. I'm not sure why they call it RAM. So these top pins are actually all the ones for the FPV equipment. Uh, you can either decide whether or not you want the 5 volt onboard regulator to run your FPV transmitter. To be honest, I've not come across many FPV transmitters that run on 5 volt volts. They usually want a lot more. So I'm going to bridge the middle connector and the VBAT setting on that top set of three solder pads. The next lot of three solder pads that are underneath that are actually there for the selection of the voltage for the receiver. Now the only receiver that I'm aware of that actually wants anything but 5 volts is a Spectrum satellite receiver. So if we were going to use one of those into the bottom row of pins then we would select the 3.3 volts and that uh, would be where this little guy would come in handy and then that would be fine. As I'm using an FR Sky style receiver. I'm going to bridge that for 5 volts, but we'll do that in the next video. And then uh, that's the only other little bit of soldering apart from connecting all the power pieces underneath that we need to do. And then we should be able to pop this guy onto the frame and away we go. A couple of thoughts on this thing now we've kind of gone through and figured it out. I am impressed how much technology we are now fitting on one little board. If you think back to the days of the very first NASI 32s, uh, it had a fraction of this technology available in this kind of footprint. So I'm very impressed that with one board, I'm gonna get pretty much all of the goodness that I'm expected, or I would usually expect to get from a two or three board setup, or, or more actually, in a quadcopter. It is a nice layout, because the way it's gonna work here, since I'm gonna install it into the model, all of the ESC connections are kind of presented more or less at the side, and we have our power connection sticking out the back. We have an easy connection for our receiver, and we also have other connections here at the front for all of our video stuff as well. The fact that these other things are presented at the side are really thoughtful and a really nice touch. A couple of things that I would have really liked if I'm being really picky. First of all is that it would have been nice if this had been an F4 board. This will run beta flight with all the spits and bobs turned on, the fastest loop speeds already, and probably not get above 30-35% of CPU usage, but F4 boards are becoming very common now, and so is F7. So having something like an F4 on here, I think, would have been wonderful. I know the F4 is a bigger chip, and it would have presented even more challenges trying to fit all of the technology on here, but uh, F3 will work fine, but you know what, F4 would have been nice. The power soldering at the back is gonna need a little bit of thought. This isn't one of those where we're just gonna pop it into the frame and then start soldering everything to the top of the board. Two reasons really. First of all is that the power connections are at the bottom. We've already talked about that. Second of all is I do wish they wouldn't do this. The screen printing for what all of the pins are, which is really, really handy, is only at the underside of the board. So once you've got it installed, you've got to refer to the manual or the online diagrams to figure out which bit is which. I wish they would screen print that wonderful logo interesting stuff on the top and put these um, kind of things at the bottom just because that way around it'd be easier to put together. It is of course designed for quads. There aren't lots of additional pinouts here for hexacopters and things like that. And the last thing is if you wanted to use four in one ESCs, this would be a little bit of a challenge too. Some people have talked about maybe uh, taking the power for the four in one ESCs off the far side of the little resistor. That 
might work but the way it's set up here is that each of these pads in the corner is kind of designed to carry the 25 amps needed for each of the ESCs in each corner of the quad if you're using a 4-in-1 ESC then you really want all the battery voltage going straight into that so you could either kind of bridge all these together to go in there or maybe try and uh, solder to the far side of this resistor here so that the board could still do things like detection of current but it it's a bit messy to be honest so if you're going to use something like this you're probably going to want to look at discrete separate ESCs like we're using in our build so join me for the next video in the series we're actually going to start putting things together we'll take out the ESCs and motors put them on the frame do all of the power connections and start to install the other signals on here that we're going to need too and then we can move on to getting this quad built Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.